Hello, this is Diego Pedreros. I am going to show in the next few minutes an example of how to extract time series using uh, the GeoClip. So we are going to use the temperature data. So let's take a look over here. We're going to do it for the region of EGAD. The data set that we're going to be using will be uh, Church's maximum temperature monthly. So that's already selected. So in order to get the time series, we need to do the following. We get, let's uh, select uh, maximum temperature right here. And now uh, we're going to do it for June, July, August, September. So make sure that you uh, click on the calculate seasonal averages and uh, select all the years that you want to use. When we calculate the average, the program calculates first the average for every season, for every year, and then it calculates the averages, the average of all those averages. So make sure that the output directory where is an empty directory. I'm going to show you. This is my temperature directory that I have right here. And is this directory right here. So this is an empty directory. So just to make sure that uh, the new data set, uh, the new data sets that are created don't get messed up with other results that uh, we have produced earlier. So now let's do it again. So we're selecting the June September season for 1981 to 2015 maximum temperature and we're going to calculate the average so that the seasonal averages for every year are calculated into this directory. So when we click analyze we're going to start seeing here this is the average temperature for 81, 82, 83 and so forth. Then at the end it creates the average temper temperature for all those seasons for all those years. So this averages is what we need to do the time series. Okay, now that we have the data sets uh, for the time series, let's now calculate the region that we are going to use to summarize each of, each of these uh, dates in the time series. So we're going to use the trend to let's select output. So we're going to use the trend to give us a hotspot. So let's calculate the trend and based on the results from the trend we're going to select an area that uh, that we want to summarize okay so this is the trend results we are going to change the legend because the the data that we use in the temperature we had to multiply by a hundred so all the the temperature data is multiplied by a hundred because the, um, that way we have uh, whole numbers then we don't have to deal with uh, decimals so we're gonna change the legend that is uh, modified to deal with those numbers so this is a legend that I created and uh, you can download it on the description of the video. I have it right here on my GeoClim help, my colors. So this is the trend temperature times 100. That's, uh, so this is a legend that is customized for these uh, values.
So now let's take a look at what the trend results are telling us. So we have what the trend does, it, it takes the values for every pixel, it takes all the values for every season, the entire time series, and regress it against time. So what we are seeing here is the actual the slope of that line, of the regression line. So this is the slope of the line that is telling us how many degrees is either gaining or losing through time. So in this case it's giving us the results by decade for every 10 years. So what we're seeing here is that these red areas are mm, gaining about uh, between 0.5 and 1 degree every 10 years. So this ge these areas are getting warmer. This other map that comes, the second map that comes with the uh, in the results of the trend, this is the R square of that regression. So what this is telling us is how strong the relationship between time and temperature is. So for example, these areas that are gray, uh, the, there is not really a relationship. There is not a, not, the, the, there is not no trend on, on those areas. But if we look at these areas in dark blue, where uh, the R square is between 50 and 60, then we are seeing that uh, those areas have a pretty strong relationship. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select a region in one of these areas, and we're going to extract the time series uh, for those regions to see how those uh, values behave. So to do that, let's uh, then we are going to first create the region that we want, and then go into another tool in the in the GeoClim and use the polygon to extract the values for every single one of these uh, years. So let's take a look. Uh, we go to settings. We go to show editing tools, and you see that uh, there are more icons that have showed up over here. Before we start digitizing our polygons, make sure that there is no any of these uh, zoom tools are not selected. So let's create our new J file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create it right here in data, temperature, and I'm going to call it trend TS. So that is the J file that we just that we're creating right now. So see that as soon as I created the J file, this to uh, editing vector, edit vector and this icon right here get highlighted with a blue line around them. So let's right click on the J file and start editing. So when you see this box with the green, it's a green square inside with an E. So that means that the data set is ready, um, the tool is ready to start digitizing. So let's digitize uh, this polygon, a polygon right here, just uh, to do the test. So we start clicking with the left button of the mouse, and then to close the polygon, we just click with the right. So we can create one right there, we can create uh, another one right here, where can right click to close. Okay, so we can create as many um, polygons as we want, or we could use a shape file that already has polygons. Like, for example, we could use municipalities or um, uh, any kind of um, 
political boundaries that we want and uh, now they are digitized now let's save them let's click right here on the save as J file so it uh, asks us again for the name then we just click OK so now that is saved right click again on the on the J file and stop editing so now we're done we're done with the with the J file so now let's review everything we have let's close this so now we have all the layers all the different every year we have a uh, an average seasonal total seasonal uh, temperature for that uh, for every year and then now we have a J file that is going to help us uh, extract the values for those for every one of these data sets so now we go back to the GeoClim okay in the GeoClim let's click on the last icon that's the extract statistics and this window will open up this one is going to ask us to enter the J file with the polygons that we created so let's go and find that J file that is right here strength TS then we are going to summarize those polygons by the primary ID and here we're going to enter all the layers that we want to summarize. In this case is our time series of uh, temperature. So let's go to the directory where we have those temperature. Then here they are organized from uh, 1981 all the way to 2015 so we click open and then they populate all the that window in this side we have the summary that we want so we have all these statistics that we could uh, calculate for each polygon for example if we select average we're going to have the spatial average for every of these for every year uh, within that polygon the, or count maximum minimum whichever we want in this case we're gonna calculate the average so we're gonna have a single value for that polygon based on all the pixels that fall into it then here uh, we don't do this load we just uh, go into browse and we're going to give a name for the table that we want as output so let's call this one TS2 okay so that's it we enter here the J file with the polygons and we enter here all the the layers of the raster data that we want to summarize so let's click OK and then uh, before we click OK this one is the table that uh, uh, is the output of the process so now it's running so let's uh, it gives us this on the, on the notepad but uh, let's open this one with the, um, with Excel So it is located in data temperature trend TS2 open with Excel. Okay, so this is polygon one and polygon two. This one right here has the 1981 June to September maximum temper av temperature average so what I do is we just give it a 1981 1982 
and then we bring this all the way to the end to 2015 so we could uh, multiply I'm sorry we could divide these values by a hundred since they originally were uh, so as the the degrees were multiplied by a hundred so what this is telling us is that uh, in 1981 uh, there was no data for Napoleon but in 1982 all the all the rest of the years we have data so let's do this for polygon one let's plot it so this is the time series for that polygon let's um, we see that there is some changes but let's uh, uh, the trend line and see what is going on so on polygon 1 you remember the polygon 1 is the one in uh, in Ethiopia so polygon 1 shows a pretty good trend for temperature going up so now let's take a look at polygon 2 and see how that goes so this is the one in Somalia and uh, is uh, is pretty good very clear that there is a trend in temperature on that region so that is how we go from uh, having the the raster data into and focusing in a, in a specific region by uh, creating a, a polygon and then uh, selecting the time series for the polygon.